Human behavior has always been a mystery. Why do people do what they do? Why do they react one way when we expected something else? How do we learn to understand, connect with, enroll, engage, align with people most effectively? Hi, I'm Christine Kemaford, founder of Smart Tribes Institute, and welcome to our Smart Tribes Crack the Behavior Code podcast. In each episode, you'll learn practical, easy to use tools to better understand and change human behavior. These tools will help your team outperform, out engage, outsell the competition. In other words, to become a smart tribe. Oh, and you'll find these tools super helpful in your personal life too. Let's go. How would your customers describe their experience with your firm? Please take a moment and rate the customer experience that you believe you deliver. Is it better than all companies in any industry? The best in your industry? Considerably above average in your industry? Slightly above average in your industry? Average for your industry? Slightly below average in your industry? considerably below average in your industry. Now, what CX, what customer experience would you like to deliver within three years? Better, best, considerably above, slightly above, average, slightly below, considerably below. Well, what's interesting is that the Temkin Group, which was acquired by Qualtrics, Their customer experience uh, transformist, uh, Amy Lucas, I think she's super smart. She probably has a different title now that the acquisition has occurred. But what I want us to notice is that 55% of the companies they surveyed want to be the best in their industry or better than all other companies in their industry when it comes to the level of customer experience that they deliver within three years. That's a big crowd wanting to get into a small, small slot. And when Amy and I first caught up at the North American Employee Engagement Awards, it became crystal clear. It's time to stress the connection between employee engagement and customer experience and to do it now. Customers today have a louder voice, think Yelp and other rating sites, have access to more information on you and your competitors, and as a result, expect an increasingly awesome experience from you. And they should. Meanwhile, your competitors are launching new products and services faster than ever before and are consistently raising the bar on customer experience, and they should. So what's an organization to do? Arm yourself. Arm yourself with these three CX boosting strategies. Number one, become a leader, but by focusing first on employees. CX leaders, companies whose customer experience is significantly better than their competitors, have more engaged employees. That's where it all begins. So when you look at the uh, research, 49% of companies that have CX worse than their competitors have less engaged employees. And we have higher engagement, 79% with leaders that have CX significantly better than competitors. So what does this mean? CX leaders have 60% more engaged employees, whoa. So how does engagement work? What happens in the brain when we're engaged? Engagement comes from feeling good, for, from having passion for the company, from meaningful work, from attaching part of one's identity to our job. And this comes down to some neurotransmitters and a hormone. As leaders, when we intentionally help the brains of our employees to generate dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, we get good feelings for the organization. Dopamine, anticipation of reward. Serotonin, feeling good and well-being. Oxytocin, bonding, feeling connected to others can be created via a number of programs in a cultural game plan. Please check out the cultural game plan on the show page. So how do you become a CX leader and get engaged employees? You got to loop in people, HR, talent, whatever your company calls it. So number two, Get your people people, (laughs) your talent or HR people to connect employee engagement and customer service or customer experience. 
So let's just call them HR because it's easier. HR owns the cultural programs. So it's key that they're first looped into employee engagement so they can help support customer experience. To start, a strong mission, vision, values sets the tone for your tribal purpose and the code of conduct. Here comes some oxytocin. This is how I belong, right? I follow the tribal purpose. I honor the tribal mission, vision, values. Next, acknowledging employees for being models of your values, good corporate citizens, if you will, good tribe members, creates social, social validation, which brings dopamine and serotonin. There are many more ways that you can read about this in, in my many blogs on Forbes and on the Smart Tribes Institute website. Look at the employee engagement um, infographic on the uh, show page too, that'll help. Next, when HR runs regular SBM indexes, uh, safety blowing matter indexes, you can easily diagnose and cure kind of engagement diseases so you can continuously raise the bar on engagement. Now to engaged employees, the organization's success is personal. It matters. It's a reflection of them and what they believe in, who they are, how they show up in the world. And back to the Qualtrics research, when HR is significantly involved in customer experience, the organization is 50% more likely to be a CX leader. Wow. Is HR involved in customer experience at your organization? Which brings us to the next item to check on our list, specifics for creating employee experience and customer experience. So, and I know these are being combined these days to call them human experience, but we do have to have the subcategories below. Number three, clarify exactly how and where HR can support the human experience. Here are some ways that HR can actually forge the link between employee engagement and customer experience. Check this out. Number one, employee communications. Let's make sure that they're rich in safety, belonging, mattering, and boosting positive feelings. Number two, employee training and new hire onboarding. You might want to check out our blog on onboarding people to ensure key emotional touch points are there in the onboarding process. Performance motivation. Learn how to create intrinsic motivation. Award celebrations incentives. Learn how to celebrate and incent. Employee listening programs. Learn how to be a better listener. Middle manager efforts and engagement. If our managers aren't engaged, our employees are not going to be engaged. Recruiting and hiring processes. What's the best way to recruit? Um, and self-revealing questions. So I encourage you to look at the link on the show page for these various resources. So the examples uh, that I just mentioned will help keep people in their smart state, will help you turn your customers into highly engaged individuals. And smart state means more engaged, aligned, tribal, together, innovative, collaborative, you name it. How has your organization forged the link between employee engagement and customer experience? Check out the tools on the show page. Let us know how they work for you. Thanks for joining me on this episode. Every listen, every share, every review helps others form their own smart tribes where teams are engaged, happy, and optimally performing. Together, you and I can help millions of people crack the behavior code in their organizations, families, and communities. I invite you to take two minutes and head over to smarttribesinstitute.com to discover more about how to form a smart tribe. See you there and please tell your friends.